Hey, what's going on guys? You got Crave here and yep, uh, this is a pretty exciting time right now um, given that uh, Steam is, you know, having its uh, yearly Steam sale, um, summer sale and uh, yep, sadly there are none of those uh, flash sales where you see an increased discount given specific days. Uh, yeah, at least or at least that's how I observe it and uh, but even then, you know, it's a great time to buy games right now uh, on Steam. Uh, even if you don't play them immediately, the moment you buy them or purchase them and download them, uh, you can just park them in the next few weeks weeks or months um, at least you're getting them on the cheap now this video is going to be about my picks for the sales uh, or for the current sale so far and uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna be buying more as uh, as the sale goes on but um, yeah uh, this is gonna be my top 10 for um, this particular sale and for this upload now for the first few videos I think around six or so um, I spent a few hours on each one to get a feel uh, with the exception with some of them which I haven't really finished now for those ones I haven't finished they're not really indicative of how good they are it's just that they really have my attention although I made sure those games were rated pretty high uh, in most official sites uh, some professional reviewers and some user reviews like Metacritic and stuff like that now the last games on the list as we go towards down towards the list around seven eight or nine and ten um, I'll see if I can get some videos uh, finished for those or at least some um, actual content coming from my uh, rig from those uh, but um, I can at least assure you that the last ones I finished them uh, some years back and can definitely recommend them as uh, games that you may consider for purchasing. Okay, so let's start off with game number one, which is Grim Dawn, uh, also from the creators of Titan Quest, an older ARPG. Now, this particular ARPG has a very, very gritty look, and um, the customization is very deep in this game, as it allows you to pick two different specializations. So, when you ding level two, you get one specialization, and once you hit level 10, you get to pick another one. So, you sort of combine those two and get as well, your class, uh, your character gets renamed instead of, let's say, you started out as a soldier and an oculist. Once you pick your uh, second specialization, you get to be called a Witchblade. Uh, well, there are multiple uh, classes, class combinations in the game, so you're going to have to find that out on your own. Now, what also is really nice about Grim Dawn is that the skill trees allows for so much depth in the game. It's it's really, it allows for an infinite number of builds. Um, there are so many variations in the number of builds that you can create, and it's really up to you how you want to customize your character. Now, also Grim Dawn is a game filled with many surprises. Sometimes there are some there's some stuff you can click in the game which won't be very obvious unless you mouse over them so yep it's things you have to watch out for and if anything I should mention that Grim Dawn is an indie game so it shows in the graphics but I think that could also be the intended style for the game Pick number two, or game number two, is also an ARPG. Uh, it's called Torchlight 2. This is quite famous. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it uh, if you're a fan of ARPGs or you've been interested in ARPGs. Now, uh, the difference between this and uh, Grim Dawn, the first uh, suggestion I made, is the color palette. Uh, that's the most obvious thing you will notice at the start. Um, Torchlight 2 is closer to Diablo 3, but not it's not really Diablo 3. So it's, uh, all I'm saying is that the color palette is so different, it makes it very colorful. Now, as opposed to Grim Dawn, uh, Torchlight 2 is a more straightforward ARPG. It has a certain amount of quirkiness to it. It's, 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 it's actually, it evokes a, a feeling of fun. And um, it at least from the get-go, from the small time I've spent with it, it appears to be uh, faster paced than Grim Dawn, although that could change. Uh, I mean, the pacing for Grim Dawn could change. I've only done Act 1 for Grim Dawn, so things could change. And uh, basically, if you want a more uh, straightforward ARPG, then Torchlight 2 is your pick. For suggestion number three, we move on over to the real-time strategy side, which is Dawn of War 1. Now, I had this before and finished it, and right now I bought it for the Steam sale and finished it again. Now, that's mainly because Dawn of War 3 is coming out soon, and I just wanted to, you know, so re-familiarize myself with the game. Now, Dawn of War 1 is an older game, and it defaults to a 16x10 or 4x3 aspect ratio, so I will include a link in the description box below if you want to change it to 16x9 uh, or uh, full HD, but uh, that involves changing or editing some DLL files, so do it at your own risk. So if you're not comfortable, then don't do that. Now. Dawn of War 1 involves base building, it has of course the awesome Warhammer lore and uh, of course once you load it up the graphics will be, you know, even the intro um, 
is obviously dated but it's an old game like I mentioned but the music remains to be very very awesome and um, as an RTS which involves base building it's not very strategic it doesn't have the ultimate amount of depth to it but it's not boring so it's still a very good a um, RTS and pick number four is simply the sequel to Dawn of War 1, which is Dawn of War 2. And um, yeah, I finished it too earlier back back in the day and um, I finished uh, almost finished it again during the Steam sale for this year. Uh, it's a really great game from memory. So what the difference between the, the first part and the second part is that uh, in Dawn of War 2, squad play is the focus and you have no base building. So I it gives a more strategic feel in terms of cover and squad mechanics. Now, the characters uh, carry over from mission to mission in the single player campaign and uh, that includes your stats and items which of course makes it have that very RPG-ish uh, element to it. Now, in terms of graphics, uh, it's definitely better than Dawn of War 1, of course, because Dawn of War 2 came years later. Now, in terms of that, I yeah, although the graphics for Dawn of War 2 is much better, I do feel that uh, Dawn of War 1, which has the base building aspect, has a grittier feel to it. And for the next pick, it's uh, Darksiders 2. Now, it's a hack and slash game, or it's also pretty much an action adventure game, but um, it's not completely devoid of any other mechanics in the game. Now, this one is. Uh in terms of gameplay, it'll remind you of uh, Devil May Cry, and on a personal level, it reminds me of Devil May Cry 4, which is a game I liked a whole lot way back. And uh, in terms of the main character, which is uh, Death, uh, which is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, it, he reminds me of uh, uh, the main character from Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver now. I don't know why, but uh, I just wanted to say that. And uh, like I mentioned, it is a hack and slash game, but it is not completely devoid of any other thing. So you do have options to sort of enhance the gear you're wearing. And it also gives you the chance to purchase other abilities. So you're not bored with the same type of attack each time. And pick number six is Dishonored. Now, I really got interested in this game mainly because of the trailers for Dishonored 2, which look pretty awesome. So as I uh, got Dishonored, uh, checked out the reviews, it turned out to be a pretty good game so far in the time I've spent with it. And um, it reminds me of Deus Ex, but in an older setting with more supernatural elements. Now, just like Deus Ex, uh, stealth is also present in the game. Uh, you are an assassin, a sort of an elite assassin. And as the title says it, you have been Dishonored or framed. Now you have to resolve these issues now the the landscape in this honor is in a city which has been you know crippled by the rat plague and a lot of nasty stuff is happening of course there's that standard conspiracy issue thing and um, of course uh, the thing about being an assassin is that you're not locked into it's not that you have to kill people to get to your objective or finish your objective now your actions will also affect the outside world so basically um, if you kill more and more individuals in the world, there will be more of the rat plague to contend with, which means the rats will be openly there to attack you. Um, yeah, there are also some effects, other effects to it, but I won't mention it here. Uh, overall, it's so far in the time I've spent with it and the reviews I've seen, it's a really good game. And of course, pick number seven is Deus Ex Human Revolution. And just like Dishonored and some other games, as you've seen in my list, it's mainly because I'm preparing for Mankind Divided. And um, I played this before and finished it. Uh, it was a really good experience for me. Um, just like Dishonored, it's, it involves a lot of stealth, killing, and uh, it's a first person uh, point of view. And uh, the RPG element in this is that it allows you to enhance your character via augmentation. So in Dishonored, there's also that element as with Deus Ex. Now the story in Deus Ex is a very, very solid story. So it's uh, basically between those who want to remain purely human and those who enjoy or want to uh, get into uh, mechanical augmentations. Now, I do plan to replay this just before I might remove this from my system for now but uh, I will definitely replay this before Mankind Divided comes out. Um, one thing about uh, this game is that uh, while everything has else about the game is uh, you know amazing the boss battles for each section of the game may not be to your liking so if you are thinking about this game watch out for that. 
And game number eight is Borderlands 2, and it's really a fun game. Um, it's one of actually one of the first few games in my Steam library, and um, I just decided to share it with you guys mainly because it's also on sale in Steam. And uh, in terms of presentation or graphics, uh, it uses this um, cell shaded style so it makes it look very unique but it's increasingly being obvious in more games right now and uh, the story is really really fun although the plot line is quite serious it it doesn't take itself too seriously. There's just so much humor in the game. Now, the game is set. Uh, this, the game style is set as a first-person shooter that is loot-driven. So it's uh, loot-driven, just like Diablo and Grim Dawn. But uh, really, it's it's. Um, there's just so much guns in the game. Uh, it, 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 it'll make you go crazy thinking about which gun you want to use. And uh, it, of course, has the first game, which is Borderlands 1. The only reason why I'm not mentioning it is that I don't have it in my library, but um, I hear it's fun, just like Borderlands 2. As for the last two picks, I'll just combine them in this list and uh, 9 and 10 are actually the first two games in the Mass Effect series. Now unlike, uh, I, I didn't combine Dawn of War mainly because there was a strong difference between the two games. Now uh, Mass Effect uh, 1 and 2 are quite similar so the first one is very story driven with a slower pacing as opposed to the second game which had more action put into it. But you know, it's still story driven. Um, actually if you finish the whole campaign of Mass Effect 2, I feel that the way they ended the second part or the second game was was had so much impact. I, I felt like it was so much better than actually the Mass Effect 3. And um, it follows a squad based over the shoulder combat with solid RPG elements thrown in. So uh, there is no major change from uh, game number one to game number two over there. Now without spoiling anything, uh, really the first game is uh, is I feel is just a nice introduction to those unfamiliar to the universe of um, of the game and Commander Shepard. While Part Two really picks up the pace, it's um, it's it's where it really shines. Now, uh, sadly though, some of the old RPG elements that were really good in Part One were removed in Part Two, but um, it doesn't really take away from the uh, the 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 greatness of the game, which is Mass Effect Two, and. Um, for these two games, it's really just great to get them while they're on the cheap in case you are interested in Mass Effect 3 and of course the release of Mass Effect Andromeda around next year. And that's it for my uh, suggestions for this year's uh, Steam sale or Steam Summer Sale, uh, my top 10 games that uh, I, I think you guys might be interested in. Uh, I know it's not it's, it's, it's not as broad a range of titles as most people would suggest, but yeah, uh, these are the things that I found really interesting and maybe I'm hoping you guys will be uh, interested in it too. So yeah, thanks for checking this out and uh, I'll talk to you soon.